Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to introduce our machine learning development tool, Foundations Atlas CE. I'll demonstrate how to use Atlas to track experiment history and run a hyperparameter search, enable reproducibility, make use of Atlas's TensorBoard integration, and compare the output of lots of different models. Start from some working example code. You can get it yourself from the GitHub link below. The model in this code is a simple version of an architecture called UNet, which is an encoder-decoder architecture for image segmentation, basically classification at the pixel level. In order to make this train faster in CPU, such as the laptop I'm recording this on, uh, we'll use a pre-trained model for the encoder half. We use MobileNet v2 minus its output layer. The data we'll be using comes from here. It's the Oxford IIIT PET dataset. And what we're trying to do is train a neural network to identify, as you can see in these pictures, what part of the image is the animal. We'll be starting from a fresh installation of Atlas CE. Uh, after you follow the installation instructions linked below and start the server, uh, you can go to the Atlas CE homepage, uh, localhost colon 5555, and it'll look something like this. Obviously, no projects here yet. This code is already runnable as is. There is nothing Atlas related about it yet. It's just straightforward Python and TensorFlow code. Let's just quickly demonstrate that it can run. Skipping ahead a few minutes so I don't make you watch paint dry. I mean models train. Okay. The code picks a test example and outputs an image of the model's prediction of where the animals located uh, for that example after each epoch. Uh, maybe I should have made an output folder for these, but no matter. We can actually run this in Atlas right away without modifying the code at all. We just need to type foundation submit scheduler dot code slash main dot pi. And now it's running in Atlas. We can just flip to the dashboard and you can see it indicated that the job is currently running. The purpose here is to demonstrate how lightweight and non-intrusive Atlas can be. You can write code and organize code pretty much as you already do. It's very easy to take a mature project and start using it immediately with Atlas. Uh, we've tracked the fact of its run and we can reproduce it later, but how about we do something a little more interesting? Note the parameters and metrics section, for example. Why don't we add a couple lines of code to contribute some information in those? So over here, we have a dictionary of some hyperparameters. We can just log them simply by typing foundations.log parameters, which takes a dictionary. Now, you can log parameters in different ways as well. They might be stored in some other manner in your code base that isn't a dictionary. Uh, for example, at any point in the code, you can just add a single key value pair like this. We'll also log a couple metrics. This is for anything we want to know about model performance from standard things like training and test loss to whatever proprietary business metrics you might have. Anything that's a number of string, you can log here. And as you can see, all of the parameters and all of the metrics that we saved are visible right from the dashboard. Numbers are well and good, but it's probably useful to be able to log other kinds of objects as well, uh, such as images, which would be useful in this case, or audio, or anything really. In Atlas, we call these artifacts. As shown earlier, the model code saves a test example every epoch by calling this display function over here. We can tell Atlas to track any saved file like this by typing foundations.saveArtifact. We can also save other kinds of objects the same way. For example, let's just save the train model as an artifact. Submit this and let's navigate back to the dashboard. Click the icon here, click the artifacts tab, and we can view the images right from this interface. For jobs that take a long time to run, by the way, all artifacts and metrics are available as soon as they're saved, so you can check on progress mid-experiment. 
TensorBoard, a part of Google's TensorFlow ecosystem, is an incredibly powerful tool that allows us to dive deep into a model's training process and performance. Atlas integrates with TensorBoard. The example code we have is already set up to track a few important things in TensorBoard. To use it directly from Atlas, we just need to tell Atlas where the TensorBoard files are being saved, uh, which we do by typing foundations.setTensorBoardDir to, in this case, tflogs. So let's just submit that. Back in the dashboard, you can see an icon on the experiment we just ran, indicating that it has TensorBoard files. Check the experiment and click Send to TensorBoard. And there we go. TensorBoard server is automatically started and pointed to the experiment we selected. We can look at whatever we've recorded with TensorBoard callbacks, such as training loss and accuracy and validation loss and accuracy, as you can see here. If we click the histograms tab, we can look at the distributions of what the gradients were at each layer of our network uh, throughout the training process. And as we get to the bottom here, you might notice something a bit wrong with the values of this one, which is the first upsample layer. I don't know, maybe this has something to do with our somewhat unimpressive output so far. You might want to pause here if you want to try and figure out how to fix the model yourself. For a quick hint, uh, take a look at the unit architecture diagram at the beginning and look at the code and see if anything seems to be missing. Welcome back. So one problem turns out to be a mistake in the unit implementation. We didn't include the skip connections. So let's add them now. Concat equals tf.keras.layers.concatenate and x equals concat x and skip. Another problem might be that we used sigmoid uh, instead of ReLU as our activation function in the upsample layers, which makes the activation units prone to saturation. So let's just fix that right now. You might have noticed that each time we submit a job, the contents of the requirements.txt file gets automatically installed by pip. That's because each job is running inside a Docker container, which is a pretty powerful feature because we can define our own dom Docker image to run the job. That means that we get fully reproducible environments with precise versions of whatever a particular project or particular experiment needs that you can go back later and rerun the exact same way. The code here comes with a simple Docker file. So because we're installing the requirements.txt inside here, we'll only need to run that once when we're building the Docker container which we do by seeding into the folder and then going docker build dot dash dash tag uh, image seg atlas. You can obviously tag it however you like. Next, we create a configuration file called job.config.yaml where we can tell atlas to run our experiments using the image we just built along with other configuration options. We'll tell atlas to mount our data folder when spinning up the container to slash data. And then in main.py, we'll quickly change the location of the data folder to match that, like so. And now, when we submit our job, it just runs. Let's run a small hyperparameter search. Atlas is flexible, and there are a number of different ways to do this. Uh, we're just going to write a quick Python script. After the standard imports, let's make a function to generate parameters for our random search. Simple approach for demonstrative purposes. The function can work however you need it to inside. Uh, we just need to return a dictionary. We can submit jobs right from within Python by calling foundation submit. Uh, most of the method parameters I'm typing here are things we provided the command line. We will also provide our parameters dictionary here by calling generate params. And for our simple search, we'll just put that in a loop. So each iteration generate params gets called and we submit a job with a new set of random parameters. And to load the parameters that were fed directly into the submit function, we can just do foundations.load parameters. And we'll just move the
Now let's run our search script, python hyperparameter search.py. And we can watch as our 12 jobs get packaged and submitted. More sophisticated search strategies than this are possible, of course. The Atlas Python API provides methods to get the metrics and parameters of previously run experiments. So like if you're implementing a search method that generates its parameters based on the performance of previous ones, such as in an evolutionary search, you can, you can do all those things. Now we can flip to the dashboard and see most of them are queued and one of them is running. And that's all for this tutorial. I encourage you to play around with this code, this model, try outputting some different test examples, tweak it, uh, see how well you can get it to perform. Or better yet, try working on your own projects in Atlas. And please do join our community Slack linked below for questions, discussions, any support, or just general machine learning chat. Thanks for watching.